Welcome back to my channel, Inspiring Knife Design. Thanks for joining me again. Today, I'm delighted to have Charlotte Jessup with me. She's a fellow UK money blogger, and she runs her own blog, Looking After Your Pennies. I'm uh, really excited to have Charlotte here today. We're gonna to be cracking on with the video in just a moment. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. And if you check the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So on with today's video. Welcome Charlotte, it's great to have you. Hello, thank you for inviting me. It's nice to be here. Yay. <laughs> so what I thought is to help our viewers get to know you a little bit um, first off, do you have a couple of fun facts you can share or just a bit of background on you? Oh, oh you, you catch me with the difficult questions straight away. Uh, <laughs> That's supposed to be the easy one. <laughs> Am I fun? That's the first question. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, oh, fun facts about me. Well, I, I'm currently in Malaysia, so that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, we're on a round-the-world trip with my kids and husband as well, he comes to. Um, and before I did this, I was a maths teacher at a secondary school, so that's not that fun, but it gives you context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay, so actually, it's great that you've just said that because um, some of my first questions that I had lined up for you were all about your world travels. Because when, oh, when I saw that you're you're off uh, kind of on a gap year, as I understand it, I thought, wow, yeah. that's exciting. It's exciting to me. It's something that I've never quite done it in the way that you've done it. I've had a little go in the past, but it's been quite a while, and so I thought, I've got to ask ask a bit about that. So, yeah. um, obviously, you're a family of four traveling the world. How far into your gap year are you? And is it a year? Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, we we were we were about halfway, kind of both geographically um, and in terms of time. So we set off uh, in September. Um, my sister she got married at the end of August, so we had to stick around for that. Huh, yeah. um, had to. <laughs> um, so we, yeah, we were we were there until the end of August, and then we left shortly after that. We have been traveling for just short of six months now. Um, and the plan is to get to kind of 10, 11 months-ish before we okay. head back to the UK. Um, so yeah, so about halfway and we are going around the world. So we started off obviously in the UK. Um, we are, we've been past Australia and we're kind of on our way back now. So it's, <laughs> we're halfway in terms of both time and distance <laughs> got it so so you mentioned australia what what are the places have you been so far maybe the highlights if there's been loads of them but <laughs> yeah uh, so we started first up was new york um and we made our way down the uh, east coast of america the us yeah so, uh, so we did new york washington and then we ended up in florida and took the kids to disney <laughs> Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> we're like well if we're there we might as well um so we went to disney and then we went to south america colombia peru chile and argentina from there to australia um then to singapore into malaysia and the plan was to carry on traveling through southeast asia um, but this virus has kind of halted those plans so on yeah. monday we are heading to Turkey and we're going to finish our travels in Europe. Right. Yes, I did see. I can't <laughs> remember which of your social media, but I did see you mention that the other day. And I was yeah. thinking, oh, yeah, of course. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think of these impacts of people around the world and like people traveling. But yeah, of course, it's, it's, of course it's going to have an impact. So. Yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I think like we, we almost feel that things have happened while we've been traveling that yeah, have almost kind of had an effect on our plans. And I think in reality, um, 
what we what we realize is that we've become more global citizens you know when you're back in the uk it's quite comfortable and nice and you sort of go yeah. oh there's this thing happening over in you know this country or that country and it doesn't you don't really take it on board into your life but when when you're traveling the whole world <laughs> you suddenly become more aware of these things that are happening in other countries and you're like yeah. oh that actually does affect me so i don't think it's the more of these things are happening um you know now it's just the I'm sort of relevant aware to of you. them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh no, this might actually have an impact on what I'm doing. So. Yeah, yeah. And have you come into uh, sort of any interesting things about the it's the coronavirus, isn't it? Have you seen like anything on your yeah. travels? They've, yeah, yeah. There's people wearing face masks. Um, the shopping centres have they've got loads of like hand sanitizer. Like you go to McDonald's and they've got a little poster up saying please use wow. the hand sanitizer yeah um but i think i think a lot of what's happened is kind of like a, a media sensation mm. um in reality you know the numbers of people that have got it are small and the you know particularly in where we are at the moment you know i wouldn't want to be in china right now <laughs> yeah um, but you know where we are we're talking sort of i think 20 people and um malaysia's got a similar population to the uk so yeah you know and most of these people are being caught at airports and you know seaports and things like that so actually you know, the risk the risk to us is you know yeah. minimal what we were more yeah. concerned about was actually being able to get out of asia move, move um, around. With yeah. All the, yeah with all you know yeah. restrictions on flights and things like that and particularly with singapore because singapore seems a little bit worse off than mm. everywhere else and it's a main gateway to the you know out of asia yes. <laughs> so yeah we were less worried about the virus and more worried about being able to leave <laughs> yeah so looking at the financial side of things if that's okay yeah. with you one thing that i was fascinated with is how did you manage to save and fund your travels for the year because i think for a lot of people that is probably the biggest blocker especially once you yeah. get beyond your early formative years where you've got no commitments no ties and then maybe yeah. you've got a house or you've got a job etc how did yeah. you how did you save up and how did you sort of plan around that side of things? Yeah, so I think I've always been quite fortunate. I mean, you can call it privilege, whatever you like, but mm. you know, I've been I've been lucky that my my parents raised me not to really have debts and things like yeah. that. So I've always been kind of very money conscious anyway. Yeah. Um, so you know, I left university, we've got a student loan, not that worried about it. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have credit cards, I don't have any of that sort of debt. I've got a house, um, but you know, we're, we're good, we're good at managing our money, we're good at saving. Then, I thought well, it was three, about three years ago, almost three years ago to the day, um, my nan passed away. Oh. And, you know, sad um but she she left some money to my parents and my auntie and they both passed some money on to me and, me and my sister mm. um and at the time we were kind of going oh let's move house blah 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 and you know this isn't this you know this money this is not buy a house money this is like yes <laughs> you know this isn't this isn't buy a house you know cash yeah. you know money this is you know oh maybe upgrade your house money <laughs> yeah um, so we had this money and we chose at that point to take this inheritance we'd received and, and pay it off our mortgage okay yeah and you know we left ourselves a bit of money to kind of go you know maybe we'll up you know do some home improvements yeah. and things like that um and then we kind of you know in a twist of events we decided that actually we didn't want to do that yeah. <laughs> we actually <laughs> wanted to travel the world so we kind of took what was then a sort of smaller pot of money and yeah. basically went right we've you know got to make this into a bigger pot of money so we can achieve this dream so my husband got a bit entrepreneurial himself and he did a, a kickstarter campaign okay. uh, where he made some made some boxes and things like that so that gave a little bit of money into the pot um and we just cut down our expenses mm. so to provide some context at this time at this point in time i you know i just had my second child she's only two so we were sitting there going you know I was part-time my husband was part-time um we didn't have a lot of money coming in mm. um but we we went through and we 
took our budget and we cut down on everything. Slash what you could. Yeah, yeah just absolutely non-essential. Mm. <laughs> we were like, um, you know, no, we won't have that holiday. You know, mm. you know, every month I was looking at our electricity bill, our phone bills, and, and checking to see if we could reduce those. And we we got to the point where we we could live and save on a thousand pounds a month. So we were for a family of four. That's for quite a family impressive. Of, so that, was, that was food, and we were still putting money aside for like investments and things like that as well. And you know, kids were having swimming lessons and whatnot. So we would literally yeah. like. I was like, oh, if I cut, if I don't have to pay anymore, I'm not paying anymore. Yeah. So we took our budget down to the, the minimum, and that meant that everything that we had left over, we could just put aside and mm. and save. And it was just about changing that mindset, really. Just yeah, no, we're we're going to offset, you know the fun now so that we can enjoy it yes you know, and isn't it amazing when you've got like a really big dream like that yeah. how it can fuel things that in otherwise you probably would think oh well but I want a holiday or I want this I want that but actually when you've got a bigger vision or a bigger dream it can uh, help you make those really tough decisions in the shorter term completely you know i was watching my friends go off on like um you know holidays around the world with their kids and being like like should we just do that instead we could have say yeah. you know like six of those on the money that we've like yeah. you know we're saving up here yeah. um but actually we were just we were determined to determined to do it yeah and so we did so you know i'm you know, being honest by saying you know we had you know, we had a springboard of money that we were yes. able to use yes. to, to kind of yeah. kick start that dream um but yeah then we to actually make it happen we had to really yeah. cut back so to, to reach the point where uh you were you kind of thought right we're good to go was that like a financial target that you needed to reach or did you actually set a date and say well we're going then no matter what however much we've saved but it, was, it was more we're going to make this happen regardless of how money's in the how much money's in the bank yeah. so because i'm a teacher um a kind of our year was sort of september to dictated you know, august. <laughs> yeah so i was like if i'm going to leave work i need to finish you know in august um yeah and then we can go you know from september um and my eldest was due to start school oh. back september this year so yeah. we felt that it was better for us to go then before yeah. she started school rather yeah. than her go for you know a couple of months or a year and then take her out okay. so those were the kind of motivating factors it was like well let's just go for it <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and even now we're on a budget you know it's yeah. one of those things that we sure. we kind of cut cut back on or to make it work before we left yeah. we're still doing when we're yeah. traveling you know to yeah. a lesser degree and but we're also we're also earning money as we go and what's it like traveling with a young family? How have you found that? Um, it's, it's both the best thing I've ever done and the worst. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I have these moments where I'm like, oh, you know, I used to be able to just like give the kids to my mum and dad, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a couple of hours or, yeah. you know, the eldest would go off to nursery and I'd, you know, have a bit of breathing space. Um, so it can be quite intense in terms of having your family with you all the time, but yeah. I've got my family with me all the time. Which, and you know, you know, my kids are, they're four and two, you know, they're, they're, they're absolutely adorable. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I get to watch them learn new things and, you know, what an education. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're on this journey with us. So it's yeah. fabulous, really. Yeah. So if you could have any, give any top tips for someone who was thinking about traveling for a year or six months or whatever it may be, do you have a couple of tips that you, you could share? One thing I want to say is you probably don't need as much money as you think you need. Mm -hmm. It's, you can do it cheaply. Yeah, you're not going to stay in the most luxurious places and you may have to you may have to offset you know one activity against the other uh you know we've walked away from you know cues for things because we've got there and gone yeah you know so yeah. you know there are some things that you you have to weigh that up um so look look carefully at the budget you know see what you want to do and factor in the main things and then 
compromise on some of the others. Travel with as little stuff as you can. Uh, we've saved a lot of money by just having a backpack each, essentially. Yeah. Um, because we haven't had to pay for, you know, checked baggage. Uh, nice. We can get in a, like a normal taxi, um, you know, or we can hop on a bus or a train. Yeah. Um, so we, we've saved a lot of money doing that. And, yeah. and also, you don't have to carry it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I see these people walking out of, you know, like airports. I'm like, why are you going to carry that? That's so much yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, pack light and do your research before you go. Because it'll cost you yeah. absolutely. And does that come natural to you, packing light? Because the thought of packing light to me, once upon a time, I used to be able to pack really light these yeah. days like i get the mickey taken out of me basically because i pack a bag to go overnight somewhere and it flipping looks like i'm going for a week <laughs> well i think i used to pack more stuff yeah. going for a weekend at my parents house yeah. um than i got with me now <laughs> You know, I think when you go on a two week holiday or, you know, even, you know, if you go for longer than that, you're not, you're not living, you know, you're sort of, you go out for dinner a bit more, you dress up, you, you know, you want nice shoes, you want your hair to look nice. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, this is my day to day. You know, when I'm at home, I wear the same rubbish pair of trousers and the same rubbish pair of top and a cardigan. And that's me, <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, so when you think, you know, that's, that's our day to day. I only need to take those, you know, two pairs of rubbish trousers and two rubbish tops, one in the wash, one out, and yeah. we're good. <laughs> You're done. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've got a blog and a YouTube channel uh, documenting your journey as well, haven't you? Yeah, you that's to... right. I mean, it's, it's mildly neglected. The YouTube channel's better because my husband looks after that. <laughs> right. So the website is ouradventurehood.com. And uh, the YouTube is youtube.com forward slash with, yeah, C with, forward slash our adventure. You can I will search put links it. anyway so that people yeah. can get um, to So, yeah, and that's, and that's just our family. Just, yeah. we, we started it just to give us something to, you know, a record for, to look back on. Oh, yeah. Um, and to share with our, you know, family and friends. And even now we watch it back and we look at those, you know, first few days in New York and it's just yeah. a nice little memory. <laughs> I bet it already feels a bit like a dream, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You know those times when we were sort of, you know, clean and walking around in new clothes in New York. <laughs> yeah. like a, Naive like travellers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like everything's got holes in, then we're like, oh yeah, it smells okay. Just put it on. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I wanted to move on to uh, blogging and, and, and yeah, specifically your blog. Obviously, you yeah. run look, Looking After Your Pennies and there mm -hmm. you share advice on saving money, making money. And I was interested to see also the ecological slant there. And obviously, running a blog is great for extra income. And Absolutely. I love to talk about lots of different ways site to make uh, money from side hustles. So yep. when did you start your blog? And did you initially intend it uh, to be a side hustle or was it sort of more of an idea of actually I'm creating this as a business? Does that make sense? So was it like a thing on the side or was it, no, I want to move into this or just a hobby? Um, yeah, no, so I, I started a different blog back four years ago and I was clueless. So <laughs> I kind of just did it to document me as a kind of a new mum and I don't know, big old judgy pants, you know, on, online. <laughs> and, you know, I just wanted to talk about the things that I liked about being a parent. Um, but, I, you know, I had zero clue about what I was doing. When I started looking after your pennies, it was more in that business mindset. I was like, actually, I've kind of figured out my writing style a bit. Can yeah. I take this into something that is going to make me money? So I started it as a you know i don't want to go to work anymore i want yeah. to write my blog yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um and and you know it's not at the stage where you know the i don't want to go to work anymore stage but it's yeah. it's definitely making me money yeah from, from my experience obviously i've got a blog as well it takes a while mm. to build it up doesn't it to the point where certainly where you could uh, make that your main thing obviously it depends on yeah. your personal expenses as well but yeah. there are ways to start making some money from it. And if you can build it up over time, I always think it's nice to have lots of eggs in lots of baskets with these kind of yeah. things. One question I had is, would you be happy to share some ways that you've been able to make money through your blog? So what kind of things have you done that have 
uh, brought you money? I do sponsored posts. So companies get in contact with me uh, and they ask me uh, essentially to advertise their products mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, through, through my writing on my website. It sort of works in two ways. You know, I get paid and uh, they get some advertising. But also I get to learn about new companies because it's normally startups that are coming to me going, oh, can you promote this? And I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a good way to learn about new business and particularly being in the you know finance sector. Yeah. Um, like fintech just fascinates me. So I love learning about all these new apps and websites that are doing, you know, amazing things. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I do sponsor posts, like some affiliate links. So yeah. where, where I make money from people clicking on links from my website that is a, is a smaller income. Um, I think I probably make more from things like my social media and promoting companies through that yeah. um, than I do from, say, clicks from my website. Yeah. I guess it's more me going, you know, actually, I use this app or I use this product. You know, do you want it? <laughs> do you want to give it yeah. a go as well? Yeah. And then yeah. people will click on a link as a result yeah. of that rather than through a link that's on Necessarily an article. something on, on your blog page. Yeah, yeah, it's just sort of sponsored content and affiliate marketing, really. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I sell a few products, but that's not a huge. Yes. But. Yeah. So for somebody who was thinking about starting a blog from scratch, like now yeah. in 2020, and they wanted to do it as part of a side hustle. So the intention yeah. was to obviously provide value, but ultimately to make some money from it. How long mm -hmm. would you say it took you to make your first bit of income? Because it's not like you start the blog and it's immediately incoming. <laughs> no, no. And I, I think I missed some tricks when I first started it as well. So I do think in those years it's quicker. But I, I think I launched my blog properly in March and I made my first money in September. So okay. six months. About six months, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's realistic, depending yeah. on what kind of... So, and you've already alluded to a couple of the different, like, money-making options from a blog. There's also advertising as well, I think, which is another one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, There's different ways, and generally there will be some sort of way that you can start making money within about six months, I think, dependent Absolutely. on how much effort you've put into the blog and building it up in that time, of course. Yeah, and, and, and I say it and doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like ah, there's the website. <laughs> um, no, and I think I think I was I was generating income um, before that, like you say, through advertising and affiliates, but none, nothing that allowed me to cash out until yes. September. So you know, because the, you know, there's payment thresholds, so. You have to earn, you know, fifty dollars before you can cash out on your advertising, or twenty pounds before you can cash out on your affiliates. Yeah. So, I think I was making money from pretty much day one. You know, people were coming to my website and they were clicking on my things, um, but the first money that landed in my bank account that I could spend was in September. Also, how much time a week or a month would you say you spend working on your blog? Um, are we talking like productive time? Or... <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> or, you know, just sort of tweaking with the colour of a font for like five hours. <laughs> it becomes a bit um, of a baby, doesn't it? <laughs> and then you yeah. just like tweaking a little bit, yeah. I think in those early days, kind of like pre-launch, oh, you know, I'd sit up, you know, like into the early hours, you know, when kids would be sleeping next to me and I'd be like, you know, <laughs> you know working away at it and, you know, like it's... Like, I think the, the change that anybody visited my website would have seen would have been minimal. <laughs> um, it was all just like this all background work. If I want to be moving forwards with it, I probably have to spend at least two hours a day. So kind of, you know, 15 hours a week probably yeah. gets me, keep, keeps the money going, keeps the website up and running. And yeah, sort of continues an upward trend rather sure. than a, yeah. you know, a stagnant or downward trend. You can take a holiday so to speak from time to time can't you it's so generally with a blog I think you want to see growth you want to be encouraging more people to come etc etc mm. 
But if you're in a situation where you know what, you're going away for a week or something happens, it's not the end of the world if you miss a week or something like no, that. No. So you can. And, and I think, in, you know, in terms of you know self-employment, it's actually it's it can be quite forgiving as a as a job. Mm. You know, like people who are you know carpenters or electricians or whatever, <laughs> yeah. if they if they if they take two weeks out of a you know their self-employed work. There's half a month's worth of earnings they could potentially lose. Yeah. But as a blogger, you can still have, you know, like the, you know, the advertising revenue yeah. can still be there, the affiliate revenue can be there. You know, you can work on a sponsor post before you leave, and it can be paid up while you're away. You know, so you can still generate income without dedicating That's right. hours to it. It's kind of over time as you grow it, your your historical posts and content. Mm-hmm can start to become a bit of a semi-passive income source which is the dream Absolutely. isn't it <laughs> living yeah, the dream yeah. so yeah. so i mean it's minimal, I like that but it's there. <laughs> it's there but also i sort of think it is minimal but the more that you go you keep going and being consistent and as you get bigger the more your older stuff is going to get looked at as well and absolutely and, and yeah. therefore grow. I made a decision earlier this year that I was really mm. going to start focusing on money making things that have a future if that makes sense that allow me to look towards a sort of semi-passive income rather than trading my time now for money now but then there's nothing you know there's no like I've done a survey I've been paid for it and that's it there's nothing in the future whereas things like a blog and things like that I love the idea that you're you're helping your future self (laughs) <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah and I, I I really struggle with that particularly now because I know that money I make now directly impacts the experience that we're having on this trip so if I if I took my eye off the jobs that make me money now yeah. to focus on kind of like the the long-term picture uh you know then we'd be looking at going, oh do we have to go home a bit early do we have to do this so I, I I'm I'm kind of carefully trying to balance my time yeah. between making sure that we have enough money sure now and not completely dedicating my time to those things so that my yeah my blog has a, a life after this trip yeah that makes totally sense. but the beauty of it is that you have that flexibility so yeah you can make those decisions now to focus on some short-term money or like in the longer term then I can flip and so forth so would you recommend blogging as a side hustle to someone contemplating their first sort of solo business venture it's it's one of those things that there is very little that you can lose by starting it you know like the actual the actual initial investment is is you know minimal compared to some other things and even if you if you you know you make you don't make any money from it what you know you what have you actually lost you've actually learned some new skills yeah practice writing got a few things off your chest <laughs> yeah. um, you know, realize that there's someone out there that's actually interested in what you've got to say other than you mum um <laughs> and, you know you know it, it, it's just and there's a whole community out there as well um and i think that you know, like for me in in my early days that was that was invaluable you know I, I was you know I was on maternity leave I wasn't getting a lot of you know social stimulation and feeling like oh I was gonna have to step down in my career and work part-time and you know how I was fitting into all of that so there's there, there's more to it than the money but once you once you start making the money it makes it extra worthwhile (laughs) but yeah i think i think as a as as a side hustle just you know for for about 50 pounds you can get your hosting you can have a website up and running you know within a week if you want and you could be generating income after that i mean i remember the point when i i earned enough money that i paid for my hosting and i was like well that's it you know (laughs) yeah this has not been a wasted effort. <laughs> you know, like, I, haven't, I haven't lost anything from yeah, doing this. Even. And and now I'm at the point where most of my money is profit. You know, like yeah. I'm spending to keep my blog up and running is minimal. Yeah. Um, so everything, pretty much, you know, ninety five percent of what I earn is profit to me at the moment. I just thought I'd touch uh, again on what you just said about the community side of things mm-hmm. as well, because 
obviously we're both in the UK Money Bloggers Facebook group, which yeah. I find fantastic. I'm in there pretty much every day. Yeah. I'm just It's one of my favourite Facebook groups. Mm. It's so supportive and inclusive. Yeah. But there's also other UK groups for blogging. If you, if you, so if you weren't starting a money blog, for example, but just a regular yeah. blog or in a different niche rather. Um, yeah. thing. So for anyone out there who is thinking about getting started with a blog, then definitely have a look around on Facebook for some groups that you can join because you get a lot of your questions answered there. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I, I can almost feel that it would that community is part of the success of every blogger. Um, I think if you tried to go, no, I'm going to do this on my own, you would, you'd have a much harder time of it. Uh, so, you know, put yourself out there in a digital form and just ask those questions. I mean, there's a lot of people that do it semi-anonymously. You know, they're, they, they present themselves as their business rather than them. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're a bit shy, you can do that and you can still get out there and ask the questions and, you know, so many people that followed me on my social channels in the early days and commented on my posts were other bloggers. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, you, you, you need that support to yeah. Yeah, just give you that too. nudge and realise that actually what you're doing is decent. <laughs> yeah, because as well in the early days when you're starting, tell, you can get self-doubt, I think. It's, it's common, it's, it's, yeah. it's perfectly normal to get that when you're building something up and thinking, oh, is anyone actually reading what I'm putting and uh, yeah. have I got anything worthwhile to say and all of that? But I think, again, like you say, being in that sort of community, you realise there's all sorts. There's, there's thousands and thousands of different niches and you're just another yeah. voice in that mix. And yes, yes, you do have something valuable to say. People do. Absolutely, yeah. So I did have another topic to move on to. Yeah. I don't know how we're doing for time, yeah. but so I, I you saw that. As much as you like, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I saw, um, I saw that you've done a bit of online tutoring, which I thought was yes. interesting. So can you share a bit with us about what you've tutored in and sort of how you got into that? Yes. Yeah, so I am a maths teacher. So there's obviously, you know, a, a demand for, yes, <laughs> for maths guess so. teachers. I'd kind of been tutoring face to face, you know, from basically as soon as I stepped out into the world as a teacher. Yeah. Um, but that has limitations. And most of the time I was driving to other people's houses. And, you know, there was a cost involved in that. I started to look at the sort of viability of doing yeah. that online and there are so many platforms that you yeah. can tutor online so the when I first started doing it I just put myself out there as a math tutor and um I had a one particular family uh who were who were pretty much doing what we're doing now like a, a, a gap year and they had yeah. two sort of secondary age kids and they just wanted to keep their education going. They, they were really well off. They could afford like tutors. Yes. <laughs> like, every subject. I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> and so I, because they were in a, you know, a different time zone, I was able to put my kids to sleep, you know, put my pajama bottoms on. It was all business up top like it is now. But, um, <laughs> and, and, you know, kind of tutor them online and, get paid for it yeah yeah so, so you know you easy. know my kids are asleep in the next room I've got my cup of tea he's like this and I'm yeah. like yeah do this yeah. and, that, and you know, that it was just fab so I did that about about six hours a week of that and was I could make I don't know five six hundred pounds a month from it yeah yeah so it's, <laughs> it's another option is it it's another thing and it, it's actually I was interested in it because it's kind of similarly aligned to something that I got into na last year, which is the Knowledge Broker Blueprint. It's like a, a course that teaches people how to get into the whole self-education industry. Yes. And yeah. I just think it's so fantastic when I, when I learned about it. Because I thought, well, the beauty of this is I can take something that I already know. So say, for example, my background is in IT and in project yeah. management. So if I wanted to, I could take all the skills that I've got in project management and either yeah. go and teach a group or one-on-one -on -one, like you've said in the yeah. tutoring and yeah. stuff like that and 
I don't know why the thought of doing that had never crossed my mind before. Yeah. I just yeah. hadn't thought that, oh, that's a no. thing. You know, I was just like, no, that's yeah. what I go and do for my day job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These do not cross over. <laughs> yeah. So to, to sort of know that there are options and there are plenty of tools and techniques mm -hmm. and methods to be able to go and take your skills and actually turn them into a bit of a side hustle was a bit of a revelation for me and I, yeah. I love that so the online tutoring kind of fits fits along alongside that yeah. I think and just the joy of being able to do that from my own house yeah <laughs> yeah with your cup of tea in hand you know yeah. you know I'd literally yeah. go okay see you bye computer off I'd be watching Netflix like two minutes later it was yeah. just like yeah it's it's a different world isn't it and, yeah uh, and also you're on your own time you can set when you can you yeah. can determine what you're going to deliver and everything so yeah. there's a lot of flexibility and autonomy yeah yeah and then there were like even you know the, the, this family was so nice so, you know if my kids woke up and they were like you know they were being a bit of a pain i just go oh hey look here <laughs> like here's my youngest she wants a cuddle and she just sit on my lap and i carry on and it was just you know, that flexibility was yeah. just perfect for me at yeah. that time yeah. of my life i put here for anyone else thinking that they have a subject that they can help others with do you have any tips for how they could get started with online tutoring like what would you say for example how did you put yourself out there what are the just the bare minimum things you'd have to have to do so i did it through a website called tutor hub now i don't oh, think okay. i don't know if they're the, they're the best out there <laughs> in terms of you know the rates of pay and finding new you know clients but i you know did some research i looked at the kind of criteria for doing it um they needed like a like a dbs check not evidence of a dbs check uh, okay interesting it was a, yeah. it was a teaching one is it specifically for like that. school school age kids then yeah yeah um but there are plenty of others for you know different skills and whatever yeah. like five is a good place or upwork you can put all of those skills out there and yeah. do it on, you know do it on zoom do it on skype yes whatever suits you um but i did it through the, through tutor hub just because it was my first experience of it and they yeah. provided tools such as you know being able to write on the screen and you know various different like maths tools that I could use that would oh, help handy. me yeah um and it was full of you know my future clients they were already on there looking for tutors so yeah. I was like I'm that's just half the to... battle when isn't it <laughs> finding finding people in the first instance yeah absolutely so I just I, you know it's the easiest thing to do for me was just to go to the platform that had the people that I was able to tutor sure. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and you don't really need anything other than that. Just yes. a, you know, just you know, some video, yeah, comforting tools, and somebody that's going to pay you to do the job. Yes. So did you have a, like a little chat with the parents first to ascertain sort of what level they were at or what what they wanted you to cover, or did you set the group? Yeah. So they they had uh, so you can you can message um, you know like you can on Skype and whatever. So you can yeah. go. Oh, type 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 <laughs> uh, so we, we we arranged a little sort of you know a, a date where it was uh, the mum and the kids and we chatted about where they were at and just made sure that we had a a good relationship yeah uh, you know, that was going to be mutually beneficial yeah <laughs> uh, you know you know teenagers are fussy things so they can be like oh don't like it. she looks funny yeah. <laughs> um so we, we we made sure that 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 worked and yeah. um and then they were like, oh, yeah, we'll give it a go. And with those jobs, you can find that they'll work with you once and then they're like, and, and they disappear and you never hear from them again. Yeah. And, you know, I worked with another girl and she never, like, she was always late showing up and they blame the time difference. And I was like, it's the same time difference this week as it was last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know like <laughs> it was exactly the same time um so in the end i had to turn around and go you know i, I can't do this anymore so you you, yeah. you know it takes a bit of time to find yeah. your client the right group yeah but yeah yeah but it's worth it once you get there <laughs> yeah i understand you've got something to offer our viewers today yeah, um, would you like absolutely. to share a little bit of what that is yeah so um one of the one of the few products that i offer on my website is like a budgeting spreadsheet which is the spreadsheet that i use um so it's not it's not something that i 
especially. It's just my spreadsheet that I have tweaked and made it look a bit more professional and nice. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's simple. It's easy to use. Uh, so if people are, you know, looking to get ahead with their finances, then I, I am offering that product uh, for free. If uh, your viewers, readers, all that sort of thing, uh, if they want to sign up, sign up for the email. If you want to unsubscribe, you can unsubscribe once you've got that budget. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. And that's at lookingafteryourpennies.com forward slash inspiring. Yes. Yeah. I thought that sounded punchy. <laughs> inspiring <laughs> yeah i like it <laughs> my blog name just to inspire him, that'll do <laughs> inspiring.com <laughs> so i think that's it for today thank you so much for joining me where's the best place for people to connect with you online if they'd like to see your blog or following you on social media uh you can go to my, to looking after your pennies.com if you want to chat with me or you know see what i get up to on a you know daily basis then uh, instagram is probably the best place and that's at looking after your pennies perfect and i will get those links and pop them in the description Thanks as well so <laughs> it's nice and easy just to click on those yeah, click, click, click. yeah. so um, yeah thank you so much for joining me today and i wish you all the very best of luck for the rest of your gap year and i wish you'll be excited to follow along and see where you end up in europe so thank you very much for having me it's been nice to chat <laughs> welcome that's all for today if you like this video don't forget to give it a like and i will see you next time